Evening, thanks for joining us. The WBRZ investigative unit broke the story this morning. Tonight, we have comprehensive team coverage on the resignation of Baton Rouge Police Chief Murphy Paul and the search for a new chief. We start with an investigative unit exclusive. Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto sat down with Chief Paul today to talk about his resignation and what's next. Chief Paul says he's comfortable leaving the top job now because of progress he says he's made over the past five and a half years. His term as chief has been met with ups and downs, praise from some groups and anger from others. He addressed it all today and remains thankful and hopeful for Baton Rouge. How long have you been considering this? Through some of the city's trials and tribulations, Chief Murphy Paul has been there. We have the same challenges that other uh, departments and cities uh, have. And while some in the community are happy to see him go, others are sad. Paul sitting down with the investigative unit Wednesday, hours after we broke the news he's quitting. Was this a decision you made on your own volition? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. You know, uh, Chris, when I took this job, I prayed. Uh, I prayed to take the job and I had to pray uh, to, to leave this job. It was a, it was a process, um, you know, it, uh, one that I didn't take lightly. Uh, a lot of prayer went in it, uh, a lot of thought uh, went into it. Uh, but, but it's time. It, it is. During his five and a half year tenure, Paul has seen unsolved murders, crime spikes, and had plenty of questions to answer. There's people in this community every day who may be frustrated, uh, even disappointed at times with things, but come in here and have grown folk conversations, mature conversation, not social media bullying, not toxicity, just to see how many likes they can get or how many like minded angry individuals who will share with them that anger. Paul has been raising questions about how repeat offenders keep getting out of jail. Bad Rouge, we can do better. After his officers put in the time to arrest them. There's a small group of people that's responsible for crime. Uh, I think we uh, agree that uh, it takes a holistic approach to address crime. Uh, and, and, and I think that the community involvement piece, uh, I think we uh, agree that there are challenges uh, in our uh, criminal justice system as a whole. You know, we've arrested more than 4,000 people last year, over 2,000 this year for felons. Uh, where's the accountability for those individuals that we are arresting and taking to jail? His tenure also saw the tragic unsolved deaths of Devin Page, shot while sleeping in his house, and Ali Rice, who died on Government Street. We'd also be remiss if we didn't ask yeah. about Devin Page and Ali Rice. Obviously, those are two yeah. horrific situations that happened under your watch. Yeah. What do you say to those families, and are we any closer to solving those cases? Yeah, you know, we, we will never stop working. Uh, I was just briefed uh, uh, yesterday uh, on, on those cases, and, you know, those are two high-profile cases in our community. And, yeah, those are, the, those are the ones that hurt most, right, when you don't have answers for... Uh, the, the family who's still looking for closure because we have not made an arrest and to look in the mother's eyes and the father's eyes and uh, still see the pain looking for answers and, and, and un unfortunately until we are able to uh, bring some type of accountability where we make an arrest and that person is held accountable and they go to jail and they're found guilty uh, uh, that pain uh, for the family uh, will we'll, we'll still be there and always be there. It also came with questions about recent hires and whether there was a disparity in discipline for officers based on the color of their skin. And why someone would try to uh, uh, present that as, as the truth, I don't understand their motivation on that. But when it comes to discipline, we focus on behavior and policies, not race. Tonight, Paul says he's leaving his job and the city in a good position. Numbers show homicides and violent crime are down. I'm just going to spend more time with my family, focus on my health, uh, uh, focus on uh, uh, focus on me in, in terms of what that next uh, uh, chapter will be. Uh, there are some opportunities uh, that have been presented that's, uh, that's out there. Uh, but I look forward to... Do you care to share those? Uh -huh. Do you care to share what those opportunities are? No, no. It could be a Walmart greed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's resignation won't be immediate. He says he plans to stay on until at least November, until his replacement is named, so he can help with the transition. For the investigative unit, I'm Chris Nakamoto.
Paul said he'd like to see someone in his command staff named as the next police chief. Prior to his hiring as Baton Rouge police chief, Paul served for decades as a Louisiana state trooper. Chief Paul's announcement came as a surprise to many, but others telling WBRZ they had a feeling. Katie Easter continuing our team coverage outside BRPD headquarters with how community leaders are feeling. Well, as Robert Frost once said, nothing gold can stay. People I spoke with say they're proud of the chief for things he's done here in our community, and they're a little disappointed to see him go. Since being appointed in 2017, Chief Murphy Paul has had quite the challenge to close the gap between law enforcement and the black community in Baton Rouge. The things that were issues when he was chosen to be our chief, for instance, the community distrust, uh, the uh, IA reports, the policies, um, the technical assistance, uh, the culture, he had actually solved all those things. I grew up in communities where um, police terrorized the community, right? You didn't see that on the cheap Paul. It just didn't happen. Through several careful steps, including community right walks through crime ridden neighborhoods, leaders say Paul's efforts got results. A, a commitment to transparency and accountability existed with Chief Paul that I just don't think existed with other chiefs. The community outreach efforts have been something that I had not seen in um, recent leadership. It was very necessary. There's a certain trust for a police officer, mainly Chief Paul, that I've never seen before. That's why community leaders say they are disappointed to see the chief's position opening, but remain hopeful the next person will continue these efforts. I felt that he had, um, you know, served this purpose to the degree that he could in the city parish, was not looking forward to him uh, leaving, but definitely when I assessed how things were when he came and what this current situation is as it relates to the community issues at that time, um, I just wasn't surprised. Councilman Banks also praised the chief's commitment to diversity and hopes that will be continuing with his successor. Live in Baton Rouge, Katie Easter, WBRZ News 2. Katie, thank you. So Baton Rouge now looking for a new chief. News 2's Best Casterly spoke with the mayor about that search process and what former police chief Greg Ferris said about what the next candidate needs. Michael Sylvia, hard-nosed. That's how former Chief Ferris described how the next chief of police needs to be if Baton Rouge is going to cut down on crime. It's pretty well understood that the next Baton Rouge chief of police will be inheriting a tough job. When you lose control of the streets, uh, you lose control of your city. Greg Ferris, who had the job himself for nearly a decade, hopes a qualified candidate would look at that as a challenge. The person you want as police chief, it will not be a deterrent. That person will embrace the challenge. So if it's a deterrent, if it scares them, then that is not who needs to be the police chief. The process to find the next chief has already begun. Mayor President Sharon Weston Broom says she's already called for the tests with the police board. The board will then call for applications nationwide, which they will vet, and eligible candidates will get to take the exam. Once the test scores are approved, the mayor will have a list of potential new chiefs to choose from. My ideal candidate is someone who will continue uh, the transformational work of uh, Chief Murphy Paul in that they value the principles and pillars of 21st century uh, policing. The job comes with a $150,000 salary plus benefits that's comparable to similar size metro areas in the South. Former Chief Ferris says, above all, the new chief needs to be tough on crime, which he says begins with traffic enforcement. And traffic enforcement doesn't just get you traffic violations. That's a relatively minor part of it, but it gets you Things like um, the blacked out windows, which uh, are a, a safety issue for an officer. It gets you into the street racer uh, problem Baton Rouge is having. It gets you into people in those cars with warrants, with illegal guns, with, dr with drugs. Brew will not be appointing an interim police chief as Chief Paul will be staying on until November. She says she won't, we won't hear of any potential candidates until likely the end of no October. In the newsroom, Best Casserly, WBRZ News 2.